welcome to All for Animals. I'm your host, Rachel, and I am so, so excited for today's episode. We've got a bit of a grooming celebrity on today, Marcia Strong. Now, before I get to the actual interview, I'm going to add a tiny note here about my audio. Honestly, to put it bluntly, I totally messed it up. <laughs> Marcia sounds fantastic throughout the episode, but I unfortunately sound pretty echoey. But never fear, because this episode really isn't about me. So bear with me, dear listeners. I promise I won't sound like I'm in a fishbowl next episode. Anywho, let's get on to the interview. So thank you so very much for coming on the show. I'm so excited. Thank you for having me. I'm super excited. <laughs> uh, the, the topic of conversation that you picked is so important. And it's, it's going to be a really good episode because these are questions that I get asked on a weekly basis, but yeah, like it's overwhelming. There's a lot to know and it can be a scary thing. And so, yeah, I'm really happy that you chose to talk about all this stuff today. Absolutely. So would you like to introduce yourself and your, your, you also have a podcast of your own and tell yeah. my listeners and everybody just a little bit about yourself? I'd love to. So my name is Marcia Strong and I have been grooming for the better part of 20 years. And, um, I own a salon out of my house. I've had storefronts. I have been an in-house groomer. Uh, I've kind of like dabbled in all of it, but I, I especially love my home-based grooming salon and I'm a competitive groomer. I have been competing for about 10 years. Of course, there was three years there where there were no competitions. So yep. uh, I took those three years off and I also took about three years off to raise babies. So of course, so <laughs> I started about 10 years ago, but really have only been competing for about two to three years. Okay. And I'm also a certified master groomer and I'm a certifier for uh, Canadian professional pet stylists in Canada. I wasn't aware you were a certifier. That's fantastic. Yeah. I'm a senior certifier. So yeah, I've been doing that for roughly 10 years as well. Oh, yeah. okay. Wow. So you've been, I'm assuming. That you, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm assuming you've been a certified master groomer for that entire amount of time as well then, right? Yep. Okay. Yep. I got my master groomer certificate in 2013. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Well, yeah. congratulations. It's long overdue. <laughs> <laughs> yes. 11 years. Yeah. <laughs> Just about. Wow. Happy yeah. New Year, everybody. <laughs> right? Yeah. All right. Yeah. So, so my, my biggest question for this entire episode is I know we're going to have to get into kind of the little bitty nitty gritty, nitty gritty details as well. But how exactly does one get started in competitive grooming? Because it seems very overwhelming and, and scary. <laughs> question. It is overwhelming and it is scary. And I'm not going to try to play it down because it is all of those things. And the nice thing is, is that when you get into it and you look back, you kind of shake your head and like, why was I so scared of this? <laughs> I mean, I can say that now that I'm not standing at my table waiting for them to say, okay, pick your scissors up. Let's go. Cause that's <laughs> when it hits me. And I'm like, why am I doing this? <laughs> you know, why am I here? <laughs> Crunch but, time. <laughs> but the second that dog's groomed, I'm like, uh, what was I so nervous about? This is ridiculous. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I mean, where do I start? So what was your question again? <laughs> So I guess I'm looking for like the very first steps to take. Let's start okay. there in order to become Great. a competitive groomer. Right. The first step is just sign up, just okay. enter. That's how I started. I, I entered my first show. It was an Ontario show. I brought my little grooming table and my little Shih Tzu with me. And I, and I bathed him the night before. I didn't even, I knew nothing. I knew nothing. I just entered it online, showed up groomed my little dog. I won third place. I was ecstatic. I phoned my mom sobbing. I was like, Oh my God, I won third place. Blah, 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 blah. And then I just went home immediately. I didn't know there was like award ceremonies after I didn't know there were oh. seminars you could go to. I just panicked and was like, I hope they don't change their mind. I grabbed my ribbon. I took a picture <laughs> and I ran to my van and drove home. I was like, Oh my God. I hope they don't change their mind. <laughs> That's so, too perfect. <laughs> yeah. Just like, just enter. And so you need a dog, obviously you need yes. 
a pretty cute dog. So there are so many different classes that you could enter. Now the classes are the different types of dogs. So there is mixed breed or pop free or salon freestyle. That is where you could enter any of your doodles, oodles, any type of a mixed breed dog, but you can okay. also enter a purebred dog in something other than its breed standard haircut. So you could not oh, enter okay. a poodle in a poodle trim. You could enter a poodle mix in a poodle trim, or you could enter um, like, like a poodle else. in a Bedlington or something like a that. A poodle in a Bedlington trim mm -hmm. or a point trim. Absolutely. That's my personally favorite class because, you know, the poodle class is amazing too, but you see, you know, 20 black standard poodles and German trims and you're like, you can still really appreciate how hard and beautiful a germ trim is to pull off. In mixed breed, you get to see people's creativity shine and and it's so exciting to watch someone walk in with a little shih tzu and put in a Lao Chen trim and you're like, oh, I wasn't expecting that. That's so cool. So that's my the favorite. versatility class. then. There's versatility, exactly. Yeah. So that's, yeah, that's my favorite class. It's also not a sanctioned class. Sanctioned, class, sanctioned classes are classes that will earn you groom team points once you enter the open class. So the okay. sanctioned classes are the poodle, the sporting, the non-sporting, and the wire coat. Okay. Um, so you have mixed breed class, poodle class, sporting, terrier. Non-sporting? No, not, I'm sorry. All of oh. your red <laughs> sporting. Now oh, I'm getting gotcha. crossed over. I'm getting crossed over in a certification. So poodle, <laughs> wire coat, sporting, all other purebred. So that's every other purebred dog that does not have a wire coat is not a sporting dog, is not a poodle. They go into okay. that. And the mixed breed class. And then you also have fun classes. Like there's team grooms, which are so much fun. You and a friend or a team of friends groom the same dog. You have music. You have a whole play you got to put on. The more ridiculous you are, the better. So much fun. <laughs> the abstract class where you pre-groom your dog and you bring them through. And then there's the creative classes, which are like, mostly from the States where they have like the really fun, like, you know, creative grooms. Um, so those are your, those are your basic classes you're going to enter when it's your first competition. You're probably going to be in the novice class. There's three sure. levels, novice, intermediate, advanced, or open. Okay. Unless you have been breeding dogs and been an exhibitor of dogs and dog shows, or you're an educator who has been traveling the world and educating people on grooming, you can enter the novice class. It's really okay. a low stress environment. The judges are very nice to novice competitors. They want you to come back. They want you there and they want you to improve and have fun. So it's really, it's not an intimidating class to enter. And then once you place three times in a novice, you have to move up to intermediate. Or if you win a best in show, or best all around, you have to move up a level. Same with intermediate. Three first placements, one best in show, one best all around, you move up into open. Open, there's okay. nowhere to go but groom teams. Groom Team Canada, Groom Team USA, Groom Team. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. There you go. Wow, that's so, even more complicated than I would have thought. <laughs> oh man, that's what I mean. Like that we could talk about this for hours. Yeah. So if you're a new competitor, get yourself a, a pretty decent dog. You don't want to show up with a dog that's got hot spots everywhere and, and really bad structure because you're just setting yourself up for more work to make that dog look nicer. Um, yeah. you don't need the Cruft's best and show winning dog. Sure. So are there people who, who like stay in one class for like a really long time? Like if, if you oh my were kind God. of just wanting to be in it for the fun of it, can you just stay no. in the novice? I mean, no. I always joked with my friend Billy that we were like forever intermediates because okay. I was a solid second placer for so long in intermediate. And, um, and then when we took those few years off, I kind of took some more courses and practiced really hard. And then my first competition back, I won a best in show. So I had to move up to open. Gotcha. But yes, you, you know, if you keep solidly winning second and third, you can stay in the same level forever. <laughs> but the point for me for competing is to improve and get better. Oh, sure. more, right. So, so I, I joked that it was really nice. I just want to keep winning second so I can keep winning the prizes. <laughs> but my end goal is to compete against my idols and beat them. Not okay. in a vindictive way, but <laughs> no, of course I've not improved that much. Right. So yeah. 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 So can you speak on, you mentioned you, obviously you have to provide your own dog for these types of events. 
Yeah. What does someone do if they don't have a very well-bred dog it's or the, really the breed that they want to compete with? It's really hard. I've struggled for years and you can find clients that might let you borrow their dogs, but then you're offering free grooming every week to two weeks for someone else's dog. And then every now and then sometimes the owner decides, oh, Fluffy's bangs are a bit too long. So I just trimmed them off and they've completely ruined your haircut. Yeah. <laughs> and a lot of these breeds need weekly maintenance because they mm -hmm. have so much hair. So, I mean, ideally the best thing to do is get your own well-bred dog, which would be nice. You know, if we all owned homes and had money <laughs> and blah, 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 blah. Um, breeders are an amazing resource. Breeders typically have between five to 10 of their own dogs on their property. They're happy to have groomers who have a bit of background or are willing to learn, come in and groom their sure. dog. So okay. I had I've been really that. lucky. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, um, getting in, this is a whole other conversation I could talk for hours about getting into confirmation shows and speaking with purebred breeders. We should all be working together as groomers and sure. breeders. Um, and so getting in there and learning from them and then using their dogs, but in a more realistic world, finding a client with a decent dog who's comfortable standing on the table for long periods of time. Uh, we don't compete with dogs over the age of 10 because it's not fair to them physically. And so finding a client with a pretty well-structured dog with nice hair and a nice temperament is your best bet or in a perfect world, getting your own well-bred dog. So I'm assuming then you compete with your own dogs. Correct. I do, but this okay. is a new thing because for a long time, I just, I was a rescue person. So I was just taking in like whatever cute rescue needed a home. <laughs> right. And, uh, and I would still do that, but I, I want to compete relatively seriously. And that's sure. the thing too. If you just want to compete for funsies, compete with whatever you want to bring into the yeah. ring. But if you want to be a serious competitor, you, it, it has to kind of become a lifestyle for you. You have to get your own dogs maintain them, you know? Yeah. So I do now I have, um, a miniature poodle, which I never saw myself owning in my life, <laughs> <laughs> but she's really cool. And I'm glad I got her. Uh, I also show her in confirmation and I also have a Carrie blue terrier, which is the love of my life. And I will be oh a Carrie blue terrier person for the rest of my life. So it's really been, like um, it's really <laughs> been eye opening. I'm really glad that my life brought me to this breed. Wonderful. Okay. So yeah. I'm curious, why did you never see yourself owning a miniature poodle? Is it just because of the extra grooming? No, they're just or... assholes. They're just assholes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> they are like, they, yeah, they are the spoiled middle child, like literally <laughs> toy poodle, miniature poodle, standard poodle. Toy poodles are your little babies, your little mermaid, and your standard poodles are like your older, more serious children. And the middle child, mini poodle they're terrorists, man. They Okay. Like, yeah. I understand her name is Possum, correct? Her name is Possum. Yeah. We <laughs> named her after a rat, like a, a feral <laughs> animal. And that was our, that was another mistake we made. <laughs> I, mistake. I, I, I love it. it. <laughs> Honestly, I say it all in fun because she is the most fun, like funny little dog. We love her to bits, but she's got an independent streak and she, this Carrie Blue <laughs> I can get my Carrie blue to jump off a cliff with me. Like she'll do anything for me. She just wants to be with me. This poodle is like, no, no, I don't think we're going to do that. I'm going to do what I want to do. So but she's got a little bit of the cat in her. <laughs> literally, literally. Yes. Exactly. Okay. So not what has, I expected. Has possum gotten to compete yet? I haven't brought her to a grooming competition yet. She's still okay. in puppy coat, but she has gone to two dog shows and she's done very well. She's a, she's a, gorgeous little dog and she is she is very full of herself she likes people to look <laughs> at her she thinks she's very fancy she wants the attention yeah well I'll have to get a couple of pictures of both of your your yes. uh competition girls and we'll share those on the episode as well so that everybody everybody can admire the beauty that is possum yes and I would Ayla love that. is the Carrie blue correct Ayla's loves my Carrie blue yeah. all right yes we can't leave her out as well no we can't so how many competitions have you gotten to bring Ayla to? Ayla has been to, Ayla's just going to be two this year. So she has been to only three. Okay. Two. She's only been to two competitions. Oh, 
Yeah. All yeah. Right. Because we only have the four in Canada, right? Like we are oh. pretty lacking for competitions. So it's not like the States where there's like a competition every other weekend. <laughs> I was going to ask, do you ever make it down to the States for those competitions? Um, I hate traveling with my dogs. <laughs> okay, like, fair enough. Not like a day trip or like, you know, but like putting them in the car for a 10 hour drive. Is, I don't know. I feel bad for them. And then leaving them in hotel rooms and crates and stuff like that. I don't love it. So I usually only bring them to competitions that I can make it to within a day, maybe a day and a night. Yeah. Gotcha. That's totally reasonable. I understand. Yeah. I mean- I've been to the All American Expo. Uh, I live in Central Illinois, so I'm about like okay. three hours away from Chicago, and yeah. even that's a bit much with it a is. car full of dogs. <laughs> exactly. exactly. And then there's no downtime, right? Like you are up walking dogs, feeding dogs, making sure they're groomed, making sure they're okay, like they're watered. Blah 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 blah. Um, another good op- option is renting dogs. You can rent a dog from somebody but you need to be very careful that you know who you're renting from. Maybe it's a fellow competitor or a breeder who has really good reviews from other competitors. Cause sometimes you show up and that dog has no hair or that dog is 15 years old or like, you know, gotcha. you're really sure. taking a risk renting a dog, but it is a good option. I've, I've had great experiences renting dogs. So you usually pay about okay. hundred, 150 bucks for someone to maintain that dog for you. And they show up with it prepped and ready to go and you just groom it. So well, that's fantastic. Yeah. It's so pretty- you mentioned like renting from other competitors. I'm assuming yeah. that means that there's a fair amount of, of camaraderie and it isn't all cutthroat and scary, but you guys are kind of all rooting for each other. A hundred percent. Absolutely. We want more people to compete, especially as you get into the open class in the States, the open class is really competitive in Canada. There's like three of us. There's like oh, three wow. of us that go to the same shows and we're like, oh, hey, hey, yeah, who's going <laughs> to win third this time, you know, like, and so it's nice to see the novices come in and we really try to keep them going through until they get into open. Uh, and, and I mean, you do have your caddy situations. I, I've had my fair share of people be mean to me and you do find the bullies and stuff like that. But I, I've realized over the years, they've kind of been pushed out. And sure. people start to realize what people's true colors are and, and whatever. And then, and those people kind of get pushed out and, and the people that are there now are pretty friendly and pretty welcoming. So, um, especially the creative groomers, I've never met such supportive people of creative groomers is mind blowing. I'm like jealous that you've met any of them because they are literally my idols. <laughs> oh my God, just go talk to them. They're so friendly. Like <laughs> never in my life did I ever consider becoming a creative groomer. And then I met like Alyssa Kasiba and like Alicia. And I was like, oh, maybe I want to be one of you guys. Like this is so much fun. You're all so friendly. <laughs> well, now you've shot yourself in the foot because possum's too dark. Oh, all these black dogs. They're not- <laughs> <laughs> I know. Yeah. Oh, no, I, like I have mad respect for creative groomers, but I do not have the, I am changing my dog's haircuts every other week. Like the, I, I don't have the patience or the willpower for that to commit yeah, to something follow, for a year. Um, yes, exactly. I follow, um, Nicole Beckman and I see her, oh, she's amazing. She is. And I see her yeah. dogs like in between competitions, still like in that at least because they part pick one it. design yes. for the competition season. I always wondered that. I was like, how are you guys like doing all these incredible designs? Like this might take years to plan, but they do. They, they pick a design for that season and they compete with that design mm-hmm. through the whole season. So I was like, that makes I can't sense. Imagine the stress. Every time your dog goes out and plays in the mud, I'd be like, ah, every no. time. <laughs> I know. Nope. I don't think okay. I could do it if not for the faint of heart. So does it cost money to enter the competition? Oh, it costs so much money. I figured and- it costed more than your soul. <laughs> it's so ridiculous how much money it costs. Like we usually, if I'm going to somewhere in Canada and it's like a weekend thing, you know, I'm looking about between 2000 to $3,000 for one. Oh thing. my. Oh, right. Wow. Like you got to look at flights Flights are not cheap. And then you're looking at a hotel or an Airbnb. Maybe you got someone you can room with that'll make it cheaper. And then your food while you're away. And then your entry fees are usually anywhere from a hundred to $150 per dog. 
And then sometimes okay. you have to pay to rent a salon to groom the dogs at. Sometimes the shows have places where you can set up and groom your dogs for free. Wait, not all of the shows have a spot for you? Well, in the States, maybe, but in Canada, oh. no. Uh, you have oh, wow. So in the States, I do know you have to sign up for your bathing times. And uh, you need to do that before the show starts or else too bad, so sad. You might not get to bathe your dog. A lot wow. of us are just bathing our dogs in the hotel room. <laughs> Oh, wow. <laughs> You're not supposed to do that, but, um, but yeah, in Canada, sometimes you just have to find a nice groomer in the area to let you borrow their salon. Wow. The okay. And, and maybe there's a rental fee, maybe there isn't, but yeah, it gets really expensive. And then if you want to put seminars on top of that, because at every competition, there's seminars running throughout the whole day. And usually sure. like a weekend pass can be anywhere from 500 to a thousand dollars. And that weekend pass, that's like the kind of all access pass, that's right? All right. access pass. And if okay. you're going for seminars anyways, it's worth it just to do the weekend pass and get all of them. And then you get entry sure. into the competition and the, and the trade show and, and you get everything. So it's that's definitely incredible. Good. I always love seeing all of like the, the groom tables set up with everybody working and getting everything just perfect. It's yeah it's inspiring and intimidating all at once because I'm yeah. seeing their work and I'm like, they blow me out of the water. I'm Oh, they, they blow me out of the biggest. water. <laughs> <laughs> Especially the Americans. Like, yeah, I, I went to Hershey and I just stood and watched like Lindsay Dickin. I was like, Oh, yeah. uh, you're not real. <laughs> <laughs> She's a robot. <laughs> I would say that, that is... with the most respect because oh, she's of course. incredible. Like that's like the yeah. most terrifying part yeah. of like jumping into it is, yeah. is just seeing how everyone is so amazing. I feel like there's no way I could ever measure up how you get there. Right. Because everyone yeah. started somewhere. We all well, sure. started in novice. We all started giving our do dogs bad haircuts. I mean, I look back at some <laughs> of my first dogs that I was winning with and I was like, Oh, yeah. <laughs> But I mean, we all start somewhere and you have to start somewhere. And that's why I compete. I compete to get a critique, especially yeah. if I like the judge, I'll travel for a good judge, a judge that I want to learn from. And I will like stalk them throughout the show. If I see them <laughs> with a downtime, I like, uh, who did I corner? Uh, Lisa Leedy. I cornered Lisa Leedy at a show one day. And I was like, look, you're not my judge. You're judging the other class today. I was like, if I put my dog on the table right now, do you have time to give me a quick lesson? And she was like, sure, honey. We went and found like this dark corner. And she gave me this really awesome lesson on my Carrie blue. Cause she wasn't my judge that day. So it was great. You can learn from like everyone's so welcoming. Um, I'm going to say though, when you do see like the Lindsay Dickens and the Nadia Bongelli's and like Macy mm -hmm. Pisa and stuff at a show, they probably won't have time to talk to you. Oh, sure. They've they got are a like, lot on their plates. <laughs> there's a lot going on. And I know some people are like, oh, well, I saw so-and-so at a show and she like brushed me off. I'm like, well, yeah, cause she probably hadn't slept in two days or eaten in two days or blah, blah, blah. And she was probably running one dog to a kennel to pick up another dog and burr, 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 and like just running her butt off. So, so don't take that too personally. Um, sure. like judges or speakers that are there not competing, go talk to them. Yeah. That's a fantastic resource. I will say I got to take a class from, uh, Suzanne Watson, uh, awesome. two years ago and it was incredible. It was amazing. And those types of things of rubbing elbows is my favorite part of going to any of like the expos and everything like that, because it just feels like, I don't know. I, I love the feeling of community and yep. everything. So I'm, I'm very happy to hear that the competition is not all scary cutthroat and, <laughs> and think, uh, vicious. <laughs> yeah, no, honestly, I can't think of a time in recent years where I have felt like, I don't want to be here or like uncomfortable, like, no, it, it, every trade show and competition I go to now, it like lights a fire in me. I like, you know, when you get a little burnt out at work and you're like, Oh, yes. like same thing every day, blah, blah, blah. And then I go to a trade show and I'm like, I love my job. Yeah. <laughs> I love this industry. This is amazing. Well, cause yeah. you come away with it with all of these new tips, all of these different things that you can try out, hopefully some new equipment and everything as exactly. well. It's, it's like yeah. almost like you're a brand new newbie again with all of that. Exactly. It's so refreshing. <laughs> yes. 
Yeah, I do love that. And I'm glad that it seems to be like a, a almost a universal thing <laughs> that if you're feeling burned out, go to a trade show. <laughs> Yeah. I feel like I see that in all of the Facebook groups. People are like, Oh, I'm burnt out. I'm burnt out. Oh, I'll go to a seminar, go to a trade show, take an online seminar, you know, like, yeah, it really does. It really does help to just feel like you're growing and you're not sitting stagnant doing the same thing every day. Absolutely. Now yeah. you mentioned online seminars. Do you have any, um, online seminars, like in particular that you recommend? Cause I always thought that this had to be a very hands-on in-person thing. No. Yeah. There's tons of, there's tons of information online. Um, somebody who I've just recently started following and I feel like I'm so behind in the times is Blake Hernandez. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Like as a Canadian, I kind of knew of him, but I really, I was like, man, like he's another groomer, whatever, you know, like he's great. He's got nice hair, blah, 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 like, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> Understatement of the century. <laughs> Understatement of the century. And then I really started following him. And then I met him at Hershey and I started really following him. And I was like, oh my God. <laughs> I get it. Like I'm one of, what do they call his like little followers? The Blakeys or something? I don't know what they, I'm not sure what they call us now. I, I feel know. like I'm uh, down on the times. I, just, I fangirl over him. The hair alone is enough. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, and, and then I met him and I was like, oh, he's, he's a really nice guy. He seems very down to earth. And, and then I started, yeah, watching his content and I was like, where has this been all my life? And I look at the date and it's like 2013. I'm like, oh my God, this has been out forever. And, and better late than never. <laughs> I watched a poodle demo that he did. And it was like a two minute poodle demo. And I learned more in that two minutes than I had in 20 years. And I was legitimately mad. Like, I was <laughs> like why didn't anyone tell me this before? So Blake Hernandez is definitely a huge resource and he, he's just putting it out there for free. And all of his yeah. seminars that you do pay for are very well priced. You're not paying hundreds of dollars. You know, it might be 50, a hundred bucks at the most. So, and then you get a playback and you can keep it, you know? Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. So I'll just keep looking for all of the big name people that do all the seminars and yeah. just learn a crap ton from them. And there's That's so fantastic. many people like there's, um, like, uh, there's a, uh, a handler here named Allison Alexander, and she mm -hmm. has an incredible online platform. And Nathan Austin, he puts out, yes. lot, yeah, he puts out a lot of free information and See? hilarious information and <laughs> hilarious. And he's entertaining, right? You got to keep yes. his attention span. I need to be entertained. <laughs> um, but these people are just putting it out there for free and it's great. That's fantastic. Okay. Yeah. So I, that's a wonderful resource to share widely, I guess. Do you have anything that's like, that you kind of consider almost like your secret weapon when you're going to any kind of competition? That's a great question. Or like something that you can't leave home without for it. Besides oh, well, the dog. I, uh, no, like the best thing I can say is just keep hydrated and eat because Fair. a lot of people forget to drink water and forget to eat and you're in a high stress situation and you need to make sure that you're giving yourself your body that nourishment. Just don't yeah. go out on the road and eat a bunch of McDonald's and a bunch of fast food and a bunch of crap because you're not going to be performing at your best. You're going to feel weighed down and crappy. You're going to be up really early, staying up really late. So drink that water, eat an apple every now and then. And <laughs> yeah, I would say that that's probably my secret weapon is just making sure I'm taking care of myself and, and not letting the pressure get the best of me. That's fantastic. Yeah. That's great way to go into anything. <laughs> I agree. I agree. So do you have any competitions coming up anytime soon? Okay. We do have the Toronto, Ontario grooming show coming up in May. So, um, I have a couple of dogs that I'm preparing for that. I'm going to do the mixed breed class, the all other purebred with my carry blue. And I think I might enter a little possum in her puppy trim just to give her that experience and get her sure. in, a, in a trade show and, and see what happens get her feet wet. So to exactly. speak. Exactly. <laughs> and then we have, there's another show in BC in June. And then there's one in Montreal in September. And then there's one in Ottawa in October. And okay, I would like to so. make it to some of the American shows this year. I just, uh, I'll definitely be going to Hershey again. Cause it was amazing. That's one I've always wanted to go to. Oh, <laughs> do it. If you can make it there, you will not regret it. It is incredible. That's, that's all I ever hear about it. That yeah. one in Super Zoo. Yes. That, that yeah. I have to go. 
Yep. Super zoo is definitely on my list too. And I'd like to go to fun in the sun. I don't think I've heard of fun in the sun. Which it's one is uh, that? They may have changed the name of it when Hershey bought it or when Barkley bought it, but it's in Florida. Oh, okay. That's probably why I haven't yeah. ever even been to Florida. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, and that's the reason I'd like to go because it's in Florida and it's cold here. So, oh, for sure. Yeah. Same. Yeah. Illinois sucks. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. I'd like to go get some fun in the sun. Yeah. And then, like, so, I'm, Barkley does like cruises and retreats and like all these I've different been things. That. Yeah. Have you so ever probably. done one of the like retreats or cruises or anything? No. We, well, we have a cruise or we have a cruise. We have a retreat happening in May in Canada. So, I'm going to go to that one but I've never done any of the Barclays ones, but they look amazing. Okay. I saw that one uh, that's going through Alaska with Jay Scruggs and Suze Echo, and I was a little tempted. That's like the only kind of cruise I think I could ever put myself through. <laughs> Cruises yeah. scare me because then it's like- Oh, me too. You Petrified. You can't get away. No, you yeah. can't get off. And what if you're like, so what if you get seasick? And then yeah. you're sitting in your room feeling all crappy? Mm. Yeah, that's okay. I'm glad it's not just me because no. the idea of not being able to leave just ekes me out really, really yeah, bad. Me too. In the middle of a dark ocean, that's yeah. terrifying. No, now I'm gonna give me nightmares. <laughs> you're like, we're not going. We've just talked each other out of it. No one's exactly. going. It's like, why can't we bring Sue and Jay to like Mexico at a resort and the, on the Hell ground? Yeah, <laughs> we're all gonna go. I don't think anybody will go for the grooming. It'll just be for the Mexico of it all. <laughs> yes, yes. I'll I'll listen to the groomers while I eat my free food and <laughs> drink my free drinks. Yeah. All right. So, um, you also mentioned earlier that you have some judges that you'll like kind of stalk. Which ones yeah. are they? <laughs> yeah. Irina Pikinovich. Irina Pikinovich. Oh. Yes. <laughs> I, her, I pronounced her name right once. Um, <laughs> But yeah, I will stalk her. She scares the shit out of, can I swear? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> okay. She scares the shit out of me in the best way possible. I'm just, she's, she's not scared. She intimidates me. I am intimidated by her because she is a wealth of knowledge. And I feel like when I approach her and I ask a question, I'm just going to look like a stupid little stupid idiot. <laughs> And she's going to be like, oh my God, I can't believe that girl has been grooming for 20 years. And she just asked me that question. You know? So um, yes. And because I'm getting heavily involved in Carrie Blues and she's heavily involved in Carrie Blues, I really respect her and I would love to learn from her. But pretty much all of the judges that like, I can't, I really can't think of one judge that is actively judging right now that I'd be like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> nothing sure. to learn from them um but yes Pina is definitely the judge I'm gunning to learn the most from right now and um Terry DiMarino I learn a lot from her every time I see her and yeah. uh Suze Echo and Jay Scruggs obviously are wonderful to be judged by they are very easy judges they are very kind they are very um welcoming and very supportive. So you're never going to leave the ring being judged by them thinking I am a terrible groomer there. Even if, even if you did the worst haircut, they <laughs> point out all of the nice things about it. And then they're going to tell you a few things to fix. And then they're going to give you a hug and they're going to tell you to come back. <laughs> I feel like we need a different word than judged because like judged has such a negative connotation right? to it. Right. And you're giving me a beautifully painted picture of it's not judgy. It's, it's a, it should a, be educators, uh, your yeah, educator. mentorship, yeah. your mentor. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. So just kind of off topic of the competition grooming, at least, how did you get your start in grooming? That's always my favorite question to ask every groomer. Oh, I think I had, it's very, I think it's a very um, common start. I, I hear a lot of other groomers say the same thing. We all wanted to be a vet tech. So <laughs> we all applied to college to become a vet tech. And I got into college and I was like, well, now I need to make some money to pay for the schooling. And there was a grooming salon hiring in my area and I applied and I was like, Hey, let's see what happens. And she hired me and it was the worst start I ever could have asked for because I wasn't a groomer. I literally applied <laughs> hopefully to learn to groom and she threw notes from the grooming table at me. She threw a pair of clippers at me and some scissors. And she was like, have at her. Oh my God. <laughs> and I was like, 
okay. I remember blow drying this rough collie for six hours because I didn't know what a high velocity dryer was. Oh. And I had a little hair dryer, like a little human one and my slicker brush. Wow. So, yeah. So I did that for about a year and then I ended up quitting because it was just a nightmare. That one dog. <laughs> yeah. I did year. that <laughs> one dog for a year. And literally the poor thing was probably wet when it went home. Like, oh, I look back now and I'm just like, so, and then I, I moved to Alberta and I thought I'd work with kids for a little while. And then I realized that's horrible. So I went back to grooming <laughs> and I lied to get into, um, a big corporate store called pet cetera. So I told them I was amazing this and that and <laughs> they hired me and the girls, the first day I was working there, the manager looked at me and she's like, you have no idea what you're doing. And I was like, no, I do not. Can you please teach me how to do this? And she was wow. like, wow. I'll do my best. I struggled through there for a couple of years. And then I walked into, do you know who Jackie Bolton is? Uh, I'm not sure if I do. So she's a big name Canadian groomer. Um, okay. I walked into her shop out of the pet store and she has won um, the super zoo jackpot something, I don't know, like 30 times or something like wow. something ridiculous. I don't quote me on that, but she, and she's, no, she's graced the cover of groomer to groomer 30 times. And she's oh, the jackpot hey. like so many times. She's amazing. So I walked into her shop, not knowing who she was. She just had a, <laughs> a listing on Kijiji and was like, sure, kid, I'll give you a job. I was so bad, man. I screwed up so many haircuts. She actually <laughs> demoted me to becoming their receptionist because she loved oh. me, but I was so bad. And then eventually she hooked me up with another job with a girl who actually trained me. So I worked as a groomer, quote unquote, for five years, struggling to learn, struggling through these places. And then finally, five years in, um, this lady named Kathy Diamore took me under her wing and just taught me everything she knew. And uh, I am so grateful because she's really where my career started. But it, it took wow. me a long time. And I had to relearn all of my bad habits, right? Like, of course. Yeah. So I got really lucky that, um, I just ran into Jackie and Jackie set me up with Kathy and, and eventually I found a good group of people. Okay. So you say that that's like everybody's story. I've never heard a story like that. <laughs> I've heard that everybody wanted to start off in vet med in some way, shape vet or medicine? form, yeah. but I've never heard of somebody working as a groomer for and that just long. It, long they can tell you make it, man. Yeah. Completely unearned confidence. <laughs> it was totally, yeah. Total. Just what, what's the word? False confidence. Yeah. I just, I just wanted to be a dog groomer so bad and I just needed to find someone to teach me, but, but yeah, you know, like a lot of us started in, in corporate settings, you know, the, yes. the big P's and, uh, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Big P's. That kind of sounds a little dirty. <laughs> I don't know if we're allowed to say their names or if we get yeah, in I don't, trouble. I don't think there's any rule on that, but oh, yeah, okay. I also started at PetSmart as there you go. just a bather uh, yeah. when I was 19 years old. And I, I didn't particularly love the environment, but I loved what I was doing. So exactly. I went looking for an independent shop to apprentice at. But wow, I just, that is such an amazing story. And to basically stumble upon one of your eventual icons, even yeah. more amazing. Yeah. Oh <laughs> yeah. In I've touch just... with Jackie. Yes. I, every opportunity I can get to set up my table beside Jackie at a grooming competition, <laughs> I will, because Fantastic. I watch her, what she does. And then I do it to my dog and I watch what she does to her dog. And then I do it to my, it's not cheating. <laughs> No, it is using the resources <laughs> around you. <laughs> exactly. Yes, yeah, I will set like up a taking tiger. a test. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, yeah, yeah. Any chance I can get to watch Jackie groom, I'll sit and watch her groom. That is fantastic. Yeah. And I love your, your origin story. <laughs> <laughs> I can't get over it. I'm so, so jealous of groomers that have, you know, access immediately to proper education and proper training because. I, I really set myself back 10 years. I spent five years learning the wrong way. And then I had to spend almost another five years learning the right way. And then, you know, so yeah. I feel like it gives you a unique perspective though, because then you can also kind of not humble yourself, but you know, once you're, once you're kind of almost top of your field, it's easy to kind of forget what it feels like to be starting off in the it's very true. beginning. 
So I feel like that kind of helps you give that extra push in your brain to just remember what it feels like to be scrambling for any bit of knowledge when you're first starting out. I think that's a good thing. I don't think it's a bad I thing. I think you're right. Yeah. I like that. <laughs> I, like that. It's, I think you're right. I do look at some of the new groomers coming in and I, I absolutely remember when I was that person and, yeah. and I didn't know the certain things about competitions or even just daily pet grooming to make my life easier. So I like to be able to share that. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, do you have any other little nuggets of wisdom to share with our listeners? If you are looking to compete, it's, it's a huge world, but just jump in. There's never going to be a right time. A lot of us are always like, oh, it's just not the right time. Maybe this year, maybe it's never going to be right time. If you want to do it, just do it. You know what? Life is short. Give it your best shot. Find your group of people that you get along with. I'm super approachable. If you ever see me at a show, please come say hi, ask questions. <laughs> There are so many people that are out there willing to support you. So this is a, an awesome industry. So take advantage of it. Well, thank you so very much. And I really hope I'll get to meet you in person, maybe this year when we're going around yes. all of the different trade shows. For she. <laughs> yes. I will put that at the very top of my list. For she. Yes. <laughs> all yes. right. And do you want to um, plug your very own podcast as well for my listeners? Sure. We're on a hiatus right now. I, we were, you know, yeah, my <laughs> co-host has a lot going on in her life right now. So we're on a bit of a hiatus, but it's called Bark After Dark. We tell spooky ghost stories about pets or dogs specifically. And we also have a segment called Education You Didn't Ask For, where I tell you all about different dog breeds, where they came from, what they were bred for and what they're doing today. I have to say, those are some of my favorite episodes because I absolutely love learning about where all of our current fuzzy friends like originated. Yeah. It, it informs I, how to take care of them in the present day. I really enjoy doing them because there's a lot of breeds that I wouldn't necessarily seek out information on like the flat coated retriever, right? When I did the yeah. flat coated retriever episode, I learned so much about them. I was like, this is a pretty cool breed of dog. And, um, yeah, a lot of people have reached out saying, can you just do the education? So I might just keep going with the educational <laughs> ones while I wait for Laura to come back. Yeah, that would be a fantastic idea. Yeah. Thank you so very much for coming on the show. And thank you, Ayla. I think she's still sitting next to you there for all oh, of you. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, I saw her a second ago. <laughs> she was getting too nosy. She was starting. Of course. To... Yeah. <laughs> she needed her on yeah, she's on like, microphone. Yeah, she's like, you talking to someone else? You should be talking to me. <laughs> yeah. All um, right. Well, I really appreciate you taking the time to talk to us. And I guess I don't, I think you've answered all of my questions and then some. So I'm just so. going to fangirl over being able to, <laughs> to, to chat with you today. <laughs> <laughs> I can give like a little bullet point. I really hope that I got, I answered people's questions because I want people to compete and I don't want oh, it to absolutely. be a scary thing. So like, just find yourself a pretty decent dog. Reach out to somebody that you idolize. We're all pretty approachable. If they don't respond to you, reach out to the next person. Send them your dog. Ask their opinion. Ask if they can give you some pointers on the haircut. And just enter the show. Show up. Bathe your dog the morning of. Don't do it the night before. Make sure that dog is prepped. You do the pads. You do the nails. You do the sani. And then you have to groom the rest of the dog in the competition. You typically get... Say. So yes. you can do some of just like the normal prep work before do the prep work before. Okay. Yes. And typically sometimes you can do a poodle's feet before you have to do the face in competition. You okay. typically get about an hour and a 45 minutes for a dog under 15 inches. I believe small dogs, an hour, 45 medium dogs, 17 inches, two hours. And then anything over 17 inches, I believe you get an hour or two hours and 15 minutes. Okay. Okay. But your dog is prepped, brushed. You're going to comb the shit out of it. If there is a knot, you will lose points. Just you can comb that dog the whole year before the competition. <laughs> so there shouldn't be any knots in it. The nails yeah. should be done. The ears should be cleaned, all of that stuff. Um, and then just groom your dog. The judge is going to give you a critique. You're going to learn from it. You're going to put it towards the next haircut. So Fantastic. At the end of the day, you're always going to win something because you're going to win knowledge. That's a wonderful not way to look at it. Cliche, right? Everybody it's wins. It's not a cliche though, if it's yeah. true. I mean, yeah. if you're out there, I mean, I haven't ever gotten to compete. 
So the first time I finally decide to get up the balls to do it, <laughs> I'm going to yeah. come away with that probably with absolutely no awards, but so much new information. So much new information. Yeah. And come to Canada because we have first timers classes where it's like 50 groomers. So you can just hide in the middle. No one's going to be <laughs> seeing you. And your judges walk you through the whole haircut. You can okay. literally call Blake over and say, Blake, can you show, like, <laughs> tell me how to do this dog's face? What would you do? And he will tell you. And, and it's a really good way to get your feet wet into uh, competitions. But yeah. Fantastic. Let's do it. I'll all be right. Well, I'll definitely have to make a pilgrim pilgrimage to Canada now. <laughs> yes. You should all come to Canada. We're fair. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, thank you again so very much. And I'll make sure to link um, Bark After Dark in the show notes as well so that thank we can you. send some people that way as well. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you for coming on. I really appreciate it. And you are an absolute wealth of knowledge. <laughs> so I hope I get to see you at all kinds of competitions. Once again, so glad we could have Marcia on the show today. And don't forget to check out the show notes where I will be linking her very own podcast, Bark After Dark. It's a wonderful listen. I highly recommend it. And while you're at it, go ahead and check out our social media as well. You can find us at All for Animals Pod on Facebook and uh, let's see here, TikTok, YouTube. And we are All for Animals podcast on Instagram. Please give us a like, a follow. And uh, if you have a spare 10 or 15 seconds, check us out on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or Google. And leave us a five-star review. Let me know what you love about the show so I can keep bringing you what you love. Thanks, and I'll see you next time, listeners.